Hi, welcome to the November 2021 Born Review. I'm Susan Barlow. First, some headline news and announcements. U.S. Representative William Keating received an email from Holtec International, the company decommissioning the nuclear power plant in Plymouth, the Pilgrim plant. The email announced that the company plans to start discharging a million gallons of radioactive water from the plant into Cape Cod Bay in the first quarter of 2022. That's just next month. Holtec International received a $1.3 billion in decommissioning funds. Holtec has never decommissioned a nuclear plant before. Representative Keating is concerned about the potential biological and economic damage caused to maritime industries such as fisheries, aquaculture, and recreation, including the public perception that area waters will be tainted with radioactivity. Keating said the clear choice was to truck the water to another site, not dump it into the ocean. Other options for disposal are trucking for disposal and using evaporation. As usual, dumping into the ocean is the cheapest solution. As a private company, Holtec is responsible to shareholders, even though ratepayers paid the money into the $1.3 billion fund to safely decommission the plant. Born Conservation Agent Sam Haynes resigned and has taken a position with Coastal Zone Management. He was Born's Conservation Agent for five years. He received a citation for work at the town on the November 30th Select Board meeting. Acting Town Administrator Timothy King appointed Stephanie Finch as the new Conservation Agent. She has been working as an inspector with the Board of Health Department previous to moving to this new position. Mass DOT recommends extending commuter rail to Bourne. On November 15th, Mass DOT's final Cape Rail study was presented to the Cape Cod Metropolitan Planning Organization. The commuter rail service would reduce car emissions and thus greenhouse gases and increase economic opportunities for Bourne residents who would be able to commute to Boston for jobs. Tommy Kerr, Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority Administrator, says that while he has been advocating commuter rail service to Bourne for many years, the timing isn't great. Overall, Massachusetts commuter rail uh, use is currently only at 60% of its pre-pandemic 2019 rate, as many are fearful of close contact aboard trains and many still work from home offices. Though Mass DOT has recommended the extension of rail service to Bourne, which Marie Oliva, president and CEO of the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber of Commerce, says is a very important first step, the project has not yet secured any funding. December 1st through 5th, it was homeless for the holidays, celebrating its 20th year at the Bay Motor Inn at 223 Main Street collecting toys, non-perishable food items, and monetary donations. Several popular bands played over this multi-24-hour-a-day event. On November 16th and 18th, Mass DOT held two Zoom presentations to update residents on replacing the Bourne and Sagamore bridges. Residents were frustrated by the lack of answers from the presentation because Bourne residents are anxious to know what changes will be made to the approach roadways to the new bridges and if and how their home or business will be affected by the new design and the construction process. On November 29th, the Mayflower 2 could be seen coming through the canal heading to New Bedford, Fairhaven, then on to Mystic Seaport for routine maintenance for the winter. 
The Sandwich Born Lions Club is holding a warm winter coat drive through December 31st. Gently worn or new coats can be dropped off at three locations, the Rockland Trust on Clay Pond Road, the Bourne Community Building on Main Street, and the Jonathan Bourne Public Library on Sandwich Road. Each year, hundreds of critically endangered sea turtles wash ashore on Cape Cod from being cold stunned. Mass Audubon says that because of the rapidly changing water temperature and the wind patterns, and many, many turtles cannot escape the unique hook-like area of Cape Cod Bay before becoming hypothermic. With one of the warmest Octobers on record, strandings are starting later than usual, and volunteers are combing the beaches looking for stranded turtles. The Bourne Canalmen were victorious over the Wareham Vikings for the annual Thanksgiving football game. Played in Wareham, the final score was Bourne 23, Wareham 16. Four new media specialists have been hired for the Bourne schools. Joshua Newhouse will be at the Bourne High School. Sarah Riggle will be at the Bourne Middle School. Mary Weatherby will be at the Bourne Intermediate School. And Elaine Griffith will be the media specialist at the Bourne Elementary School. Hey, remember to lock your cars. Bourne police are investigating a series of vehicle break-ins that, that occurred in Sagamore Beach area. The police received 10 calls regarding break-ins of about 15 vehicles and one stolen vehicles. All of the vehicles have been left unlocked and were undamaged, but numerous items were stolen from the vehicles. If your car was illegally entered, even if nothing was stolen, the police ask that you let them know by calling 508-759-4451 or send them an email at policedetectives at townofborn.com. Now for our top stories. Bourne Special Town Meeting was held on November 15th. Over 450 residents packed the Bourne High School Auditorium. The large turnout was due to Article 11, a private petition to request that the Board of Selectmen and Sewer Commissioners, who are one and the same, oppose any wastewater permits for projects having discharge of wastewater into the Cape Cod Canal in the vicinity of the Mass Maritime Academy. The Finance Committee made a positive motion, seven in favor and three opposed. The Board of Selectmen voted zero in favor, four opposed and one abstention. A few weeks before the vote, red and white yard signs saying vote yes on Article 11, stop the pipe could be seen around town. And hundreds of flyers were handed out in a grassroots movement by the Save the Cape Cod Canal Committee. The Buzzards Bay Coalition, who are the proponent of this option, presented it to the public through a Zoom meeting back on January 26, 2021. They responded by mailing out their own flyer asking voters to vote no on Article 11, reiterating that the plan would result in highly treated wastewater removing 95% of the nitrogen in the effluent. The option championed by the Buzzards Bay Coalition calls for expanding the Wareham Wastewater Treatment Plant into a multi-town plant that would collect and treat wastewater from Bourne, Wareham, Plymouth, and the Mass Maritime Academy and directly discharge 3.5 million gallons up to 10 million gallons per day of highly treated wastewater into the Cape Cod Canal in the vicinity of the Mass Maritime Academy on Taylor's Point, across from Gray Gables Beach. The article finally came up in the lottery pick around 10 p.m. with cheers from tired and impatient voters. The discussion began with a video presentation by W. Thomas Barlow showing an innovative alternative nitrogen removal system promoted by the Barnstable Clean Water Coalition Executive Director Z. Crocker. So this is the nitro system. This system, we believe, is going to be one of the absolutely key solutions to cleaning up the waters here on Cape Cod. A groundwater highly charged with nitrogen and other contaminants. Uh, these systems, the systems in the background here, uh, can remove 95% uh, or more of the nitrogen. Actually is equally successful, it looks like, early days at pharmaceuticals, many household products. So we're really excited about this. This is not only important for the estuary, it's important for the groundwater 
uh, the drinking water that we all drink. And in the background, I don't know if you can see it or not, is Shubal Pond, a 55 uh, acre approximately pond here. Uh, that has been closed again for three years running because of contamination. What we're installing here with this unit is the result of four to five years of ongoing testing and R&D, both in the field and at the Massachusetts Alternative Test Center. The nitro tank goes in between the septic tank and the leach field or leach chamber to where it focuses on removing nitrogen, organic carbon, and suspended solids. The specific focus is on removing total nitrogen from the system. We're expecting that this system will achieve 90-95% nitrogen removal consistently. It's a heck of an opportunity that Clean2 with the Barnstable Clean Water Coalition along with other partners from the Massachusetts Test Center, EPA, and the U.S. Geological Survey to really put these nitro systems through their paces and really demonstrate what can be achieved and consistently produce a highly treated effluent. The whole focus here has been simplicity, starting with simplicity of design, simplicity of fabrication, simplicity of installation, and simplicity of operation so that the operation will be, in essence, very, very low maintenance. The original nitro system uh, was put in at the test center at about, I think it was about 2015 or so, John Smith. Um, you know, we do the sampling and, and those things for him um, and also provide him with feedback on the operation of the systems. These types of systems, which are the more recent iterations of innovative alternative systems, um, can really get us in the range of what, what treatment plants are able to do. Um, and in a lot of cases, the costs are significantly lower than full-scale deployment of, uh, you know, a full sewer system, which would include a treatment plant and the collection system, which can run into several million dollars. Whereas this, this type of a technology could be deployed at a fraction of a cost. 85% of the problem with the groundwater here on Cape Cod has to do with septic systems, so-called Title V systems that simply don't work. Mr. Barlow argued it was much less expensive than expanding the Wareham treatment plant and requiring Bourne residents to hook up to a sewer system. The video also showed Galen Skip Barlow speaking to the Board of Sewer Commissioners, stating that Bourne already has over 175 innovative alternative nitrogen removal systems in place in residences. Skip Barlow, president of the Save the Cape Cod Canal Committee, was unable to attend town meeting as he was injured in a fall from a ladder on October 29th. Mr. W. Thomas Barlow said he was concerned that contaminants will build up over time and that breakage in the treatment plant system could result in millions of gallons of raw, untreated wastewater being released right across from Gray Gables Beach. He mentioned that Plymouth had had a break in a sewer pipe a few years ago, releasing millions of gallons of untreated water and cost $48 million to repair. The Buzzards Bay Coalition says the highly treated wastewater would be 95% clean. John Bunwith of Katomet said that 5% of 10 million gallons is 500,000 gallons. He gave an analogy of a large tanker truck holding 10,000 gallons and asked voters to picture 50 tanker trucks lined up on Taylor's Point to dump their tanks filled with unclean effluent right at the Mass Maritime Academy every single day. Voters also voiced concern about increased salinity caused by the treated effluent having a negative effect on fish and shellfish beds. Also of concern were contaminants such as PFAS, which are being found in Cape waters. PFAS are forever chemicals because they don't break down and can cause many harmful effects to marine life and humans. Select board member and sewer commissioner Mary Jane Mastrangelo urged voters to vote no on 11. She said the town has hired envi environmental partners to develop a comprehensive wastewater management plan for the town and didn't want this option to be taken off the table. 
Voters are also concerned with damage to property values in Bourne by keeping this option on the table. Prospective home buyers might shy away from listings in Bourne if it remains a potential host site for a multi-town outfall pipe on its shoreline. After about 40 minutes of discussion, voters gave a resounding yes vote to Article 11. There were 16 other articles on the warrant and many articles are concerned with general housekeeping of town accounts and bill paying. But a few articles did have lots of discussion. Article 9 deals with seven CPC funding requests for community housing, historic preservation, and open space and recreation projects. Thomas Barnes of Gray Gables argued that half of the CPC funding amount was slated for the extension of the Shining Sea bikeway from North Falmouth to the Cape Cod Canal. He advocated having the article removed from the group of CPC projects and made a motion to separate it from Article 9. His motion was voted down. Former selectman and current Charter Review Committee Chairman Steve Mealy questioned the CPC funding of repairs to the Jonathan Bourne Public Library and also the Recreation Department's request for funding to have a professional engineer study the recreational area behind the Bourne Community Building on Main Street. After lengthy discussion, Article 9 was passed in its entirety. On December 2nd, the Board of Sewer Commissioners and Environmental Partners held a meeting in order to update residents on the progress of the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, called the CWMP, over 50 people attended in person and by Zoom. Environmental partners were hired in October of 2020 to assist Bourne in creating the Comprehensive Wastewater Plan. The plans are required for Cape communities to comply with the Cape Cod Commission's so-called 208 plan. The Cape Cod Commission was ordered by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection in January of 2013 to update the Cape's Water Quality Management Plan to comply with Section 208 of the Federal Clean Water Act. A few residents spoke at the beginning of the meeting during the public comment period. Most were reiterating the vote from town meeting that they are vehemently opposed to dumping treated or untreated wastewater into the canal. Mary Andrews of Hideaway Village addressed the board saying, I hope you all got the message. The meeting was focused on phase one, which was a needs assessment by designating watershed areas that contribute to specific embayments. One of the key points made was that the average Title V septic system contributes 13 pounds of nitrogen per year to a watershed area. Each watershed has a specific nitrogen maximum load that should be met for a healthy embayment. There were breakout groups for watershed areas. Alternative systems were discussed as a solution for most of the watersheds. Funding for the project is considered a priority. The Board of Selectmen, Sewer Commissioners, and Environmental Partners were urged to go after grant funding as soon as possible, as opposed to waiting until 2023 when the CWMP is expected to be completed by the Environmental Partners. Kickoff to Christmas in Old Bourne Village was held on Friday, December 3rd. The Aptuxic Garden Club of Bourne had hundreds of holiday greens set up and displayed for its annual green sale on the lawn of the Briggs McDermott House across from the Bourne Library. Scores of club members had been making the greens during workshops over the previous couple of weeks. These unique handmade and highly decorated greens ranged in price from $10 to $40 and benefits scholarships given out by the Abtuxet Garden Club. At 4 p.m., the Briggs McDermott House opened to the public free of charge to share the holiday spirit with its theme of the Nutcracker. Our theme this year is a Nutcracker Christmas. And the reason why we decided to do that, number one, the Bourne Public Library is hosting the New England Ballet Theater there this evening um, before the Christmas tree lighting. Some of the performers from their Nutcracker, which is happening this weekend, are going to be performing live at the library. Then a few of them will also be popping over here. 
And so we thought it would be really cool if we had the same theme going on um, at the Briggs house. Here's Clara. The rest of the house has lots of neat treats to see. Um, we'll go downstairs and look at our Nutcracker and our Sugar Plum Fairy. And then we also have a really beautiful display of the Land of the Sweets in our dining room. And then um, the first room when you walk in, in the parlor room, that's the Land of Snow. So we have um, a community event happening tonight here. So because of that, I really wanted to get some other people involved. So we have our Cub Scouts here, and they're helping any children that want to build a bird seat ornament. And then our Boy Scouts are here also, and they have set up our fire pit. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi, how are you? You're on the camera. <laughs> And then we also have one of our students from Upper Cape Tech and along with her teacher and mentor are here. They're going to be building an ice sculpture for us. What are you going to make? A snowman. Oh, excellent. And I'm with Born TV. What Can I ask your names? Yeah, I'm Sienna Boss. I'm a student at Upper Cape Tech in the culinary arts program. At 5.30, the Jonathan Bourne Public Library hosted a short performance of the Nutcracker. A cupcake truck served complimentary cupcakes and the annual lighting of the library Christmas tree was done by library trustee chair Kathy Fox Alfano and the friends of the library chair Marilyn Chiralo. A short stroll away from 6 to 8 p.m., the Bourne Historic Society hosted a nutcracker display at the Bourne Historic Center on Keene Street with harp music by Maureen Dunn and complimentary quahog chowder and hot apple cider. Here's what's happening downtown. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held for the Rod and Rail Gastro Pub located at 149 Main Street. The planters on Main Street and Town Hall have been decorated for the holidays with greens, bows, and birch branches by members of the Abtuxic Garden Club. Here's an update on services. Please don't bag your recycling and please remember to position your recycling and trash barrels three feet apart. Cleaning out your closets, clean clothing and textiles should be bagged and brought to drop boxes located in the parking lots of the Bourne Public Schools. These donations benefit the Bourne PTA. The Council on Aging located in the Bourne Community Building on Main Street offers a variety of programs to those 60 years of age and older. Wednesday chair yoga at 10.30 and then meditation at 11 with Sherry Best are free and are so popular that they're now both offered again on Thursdays. Two new classes are coming in January, Tai Chi and Neuro Go. Don't forget to check out all the exercise programs at the Council on Aging. Drum Circle will be held on December 15th. Be sure to register in advance for this popular event. 
On Friday, December 17th, it's a holiday dance at the Community Building, sponsored by the Council on Aging from 2 to 4 p.m. with DJ Gomes. There's lots more programming at the Council on Aging. Check out their newsletter online at townofborn.com. Just click on Council on Aging Department and then select Newsletter from the menu on the left. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Aria. How was your Thanksgiving? Quiet, relaxing. Nice. Got the tree up. Excellent, excellent. So what are you working on? I am doing the survey for the library. If you go online to the website, right on the top, you'll see survey. And we are interested in getting everybody's opinion of what you'd like to see in the library. So you want people to go to bornlibrary.org? Yep. And where do they find the survey? It's right on the top. You can't miss it. Mm. Oh, so it's a banner with a link? That's it. Okay. It's so kind of easy. Qu- Sorry? It's so easy. What kind of questions do you say? Ah, well, everything from why do you use the library to why don't you use the library? And your input is really, really important. Just because we do it this way now doesn't mean we can do it the same forever and ever. So take a few minutes. It's maybe a 20-question survey that asks, would you like Sunday hours? Would you like more programs? What things could we bring to you in the next three, five years? Um, It's all part of our strategic plan, which is really, really important. It's a blueprint for how we move forward. Last month, the jazz band Two Human performed at the library. If you missed it, you can see it in its entirety on the Born Community TV YouTube channel. Hit subscribe to keep up to date with what's happening in Bourne. Curbside pickup is still available at the library. Here are some beautiful photos taken by area photographers showing the beauty that surrounds us. Here's an update on COVID-19. Here's an update on COVID-19. The Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine was authorized by the CDC for use in children ages 5 to 11 on November 2nd. Contact your child's health care provider or search vaxfinder.mass.gov for vaccination appointments. The first case of the new African variant called Omicron was detected in Massachusetts on December 4th. Massachusetts has fully vaccinated more than 4.8 million people. Here's how we are doing in Bourne and surrounding towns. Positivity rates are for the last two weeks of November. Bourne, 7.9%, Falmouth, 4.550%, Mashpee, 5.02%, Plymouth, 6.81%, Sandwich, 7.75%, and Wareham, 8.62%. All three COVID-19 vaccines in use in the United States, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, have been shown to be highly effective and protective against severe disease resulting in hospitalization or death due to known COVID-19 variants and remain the single best way for people to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their community, according to health officials. There are more than 1,000 locations across Massachusetts to get vaccinated or receive a booster shot. The vaccine is free and no ID or insurance is required for vaccination. Visit vaxfinder.mass.gov for a list of vaccination locations. 
Do you need a COVID test? drive through COVID testing is available by appointment at the Cape Cod Hospital Campus in Hyannis, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 11 a.m. and 3.30 to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 7.30 to 11 a.m. And at the Falmouth Hospital Campus, Sunday through Thursday, 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. Also, check out CVS and Walgreens websites for available COVID testing appointments. Here's a look at the calendar. Blue and white holiday lights decorate a portion of Buzzards Bay Park on Main Street as the railway station for the Polar Express train ride. The Polar Express runs through December 23rd on weekends and some weekdays. Visit capetrain.com for schedules and tickets. At Mashpee Commons, it'll, there will be the annual Christmas parade on Saturday, December 11th, winding through the commons. While tickets to Gardens Aglow at the Heritage Museum and Gardens and Sandwich has sold out, you can enjoy one of the most beloved and popular Christmas displays in the state at the National Shrine of Our Lady of La Salette, featuring 300,000 to 400,000 lights illuminating over 10 acres of winter wonderland. Lights are on every day from 5 to 9 p.m. from November 25th through January 2nd. It's free of charge. Holidays at Highfield Hall in Falmouth will be open December 9th to the 12th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Santa will be at the Highfield Hall on Saturday, December 11th. Pre-registration to visit Highfield Hall is required. Give them a call at 508-495-1878 or visit their website highfieldhallandgardens.org. On January 1st, it's the annual Monument Beach Polar Plunge. This is freezing for a reason, and the event benefits the Bourne Food Pantry. From myself and everyone at Bourne TV, we wish you a safe and happy holiday, and we'll see you next year.